Hello, this is again Tom Lischer with Inside Cardiology and today we're talking about something much more historical and uh, the title is From Herbs to Pills to Genetic Tools. It really goes over centuries and if we look back uh, in uh, 1785 William Withering uh, observed a herb lady how she treated a patient with foxglove and eventually the patient urinated and what he called dropsy was cured. Then it took almost uh, 150 years in 1928 when William Alexander uh, Fleming rather uh, discovered penicillin by mistake. And then again in the 60s we had James Black with propranolol, uh, Sir John Wayne with the discovery of aspirin and its antiplatelet effects and eventually in 1974, from a snake venom, uh, uh, Dr. Cushman, uh, working at Bristol Myers Squibb, discovered captopril. So these are the drugs that have been discovered over 200 years and changed medicine substantially. But then uh, came new things. We learned from the immune system that antibodies are very potent tools. And for instance, infliximab was developed for rheumatoid arthritis and today we have an antibody against PCSK9. So from herbs to molecules to antibodies was uh, the progress that we made in these uh, 200 years. But now, the next step. Here it is. We want to actually shut down the production of bad proteins from the very start. And we can do this now with modern technologies, be it antisense, oligonucleotides or RNA interference, which was uh, awarded a Nobel Prize for this eminent discovery. Now, antisense on the oligonucleotides, they go into the uh, cell. As you can see here, they interfere with the RNA and make it available to RNAs and everything is digested and the protein is not formed. This uh, will be developed for uh, lipoprotein A as an, an example. On the right hand side you see RNA interference where you have a double-stranded RNA that uh, interacts with the RISC, uh, the so-called RNA-induced silencing complex and stays there and therefore can interfere with the uh, formation of a protein such as PCSK9 for months in time. And these are very specific tools and therefore so far their safety has been really impressive. And here you see how this works really because you want it in only one organ, be it the liver as you see here. And of course the liver has a receptor that's called the acyloglycoprotein receptor or ASGR and this can be attacked by the N-acetyl glucosamine that interact with a, with a, 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 a protein to receptor interaction. And then of course the RNA or the, uh, the uh, uh, antisense or oligonucleotide as it may be is taken up into the liver and interferes with different parts of the uh, metabolism. For instance up here we have RNA interference uh, with this tag and it interferes with risk and can for instance shut down uh, glycopro uh, gly glycoproteins, PCSK9, you name it, whatever you are targeting at. And then of course uh, the uh, ant antisense oligonucleotides, they do the same thing with a different mechanism and they are for instance developed as I mentioned for lipoprotein little a. And so this is one example. This is in Clisiran and uh, you can see here the structure, the backbone of the uh, uh, RNA, the double-stranded RNA has been modified so it's more stable and not digested when it is injected subcutaneously and it can reach only the liver with this tag that is, uh, as I said, an N-acetyl glycosome, I mean that, uh, act, uh, that binds to the ASR, uh, ASGR receptor on liver cells. And of course when you do this, this is just one example that uh, is currently developed, you can see on the left hand side that over months, in fact half a year, the uh, protein PCSK9 is reduced substantially as is LDL uh, cholesterol. 
So these new tools are highly specific, long lasting and therefore are very, very useful for patients that have difficulties with compliance. And it's a new form of pharmacotherapy I would actually put to you. This is the pharmacotherapy of the future. And we have already seen that this technology will beat COVID-19. And it's only innovation that will help us to overcome the pandemic. And it's this innovation which will allow us to reach the LDL targets defined by the ESC in their most recent guidelines. So in more than 200 years, we went from herbs to molecules, to antibodies, and eventually genetic tools. An exciting journey, and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.